Hey guys, how are you? Happy Monday night. Welcome to Snapdown Wrestling. I'm your host, Tommy Lynch. Tonight we have a great show for you on the Fans Only Sports Network. Snapdown Wrestling powered by Fans Only Sports Network. Tonight our showrunner is Nick LeBlanc. Thank you, Nick, for being uh, with us tonight. And tonight we have some great guests. Uh, it's been a, a crazy week. Uh, a couple of past couple of weekends have been absolutely crazy with the Reno World Championships happening. Uh, two weeks ago, or um, I should say last weekend and this past week, again, having the um, NHSDA uh, National Championship, the high school national championship. So a lot of wrestling going on and even more wrestling going on today because guess what, everybody? The long-anticipated wait is over. Wrestling has been approved. We are practicing uh, at Nick, are we back? Okay, great. We are back. Sorry about that. Some technical difficulties, uh, which happens, but uh, doesn't change the fact that we are all excited. We are having a season. We didn't think we we're going to have a season. I told everybody to stay positive, keep the positive energy flowing, and it will happen. Well, it's happening. Um, it's it's real exciting. At our first practice today, um, numbers are not where they're supposed to be, but uh, still. We got some numbers. Um, talked to some other coaches. Their numbers are good, uh, but we're competing with uh, baseball and lacrosse uh, tonight. Our guests are um, amazing. We have uh, Nick Fine with us from Bishop Hendrickson. He's a senior uh, from Bishop Hendrickson and just won the uh, national championship over the weekend. And we also have Gabe Boisu with us tonight who placed third over the weekend in the national championship and uh, previous weekend won the Reno world championship. So world champion Gabe Boisu and uh, national champion, Nick fine. Uh, just absolutely amazing. We also have uh, their coaches with us. We have Kevin Hennessy head coach from Bishop Hendrickson, And we also have Serge Boisu. Uh, with us tonight. So it's going to be a great show. With that being said, Kevin, let's pull him out of the lounge, get him right up and going out of the box. Kevin, how you doing, coach? I'm doing well today. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Not as fabulous as I was doing last week, because last week I was actually in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada <laughs> on my spring break, which was well-deserved. And while you guys were um, in sleet and snow, I was in a pool at the golden nugget swimming in 90 degree weather. So, um, but uh, this week, just as excited, just as happy because we have a wrestling season going and uh, there are some guidelines and restrictions. Uh, when I say some, I do mean four pages of new changes and restrictions and guidelines and things that have to be adhered to, which is fine, which is fine. We don't mind that we're having a season, but uh, coach, uh, before we get into um, the good of what was going on uh, this past weekend and the weekend before, let's talk about this season up and coming and what your thoughts are on it. Yeah, so I'm excited that there is a season. Um, we were all nervous that there wasn't going to be a season. But uh, we lucked out. It's not exactly what we want, um, but it's something that the kids definitely need. They need a little bit of closure. Uh, it's just it's, It wouldn't have been fair if they didn't get it. Um, some of the rules that the RIL put out are unrealistic, but I think, you know, I think we can make everything work and, um, we're going to have a shortened nine week season. And if we're lucky, you know, potentially we have a state tournament at the end. Um, you mentioned numbers. We're definitely not going to have the numbers that we usually have just due to the fact we're competing with other sports. Um, but that being said, uh, you know, the kids that do get to wrestle good for them and, um, I'm going to do my best job to make it enjoyable for them so they have a memory. Right. And you always do a great job um, in that respect and uh, also in, uh, you know, coaching and making sure that it gets done. And, you know, you guys have um, a great season, uh, multi-time uh, 
state championship coach, New England championship coach, uh, Kevin Hennessy. Um, just above and beyond for your wrestlers. And uh, this season is going to be no different because we're all in the same boat. We're, we have to wrestle with masks on, um, you know, which uh, other states didn't have to. And, you know, as you saw in the NCAA Division One National Championship, the wrestlers were not wearing masks. The refs and the coaches were wearing masks, and that's understandable. But the wrestlers were not, um, which, you know, um, if you're being tested, Kevin, uh, the, the day of the match, do you think the, some of the over the kill that you're talking about, over cautiousness, uh, is it wearing the mask after being tested and popping a negative test? Yeah, I mean, you know, popping a negative test, then having to wear a mask having to wash the mat between matches when there's a one in 10,000 chance of getting it off of a surface. Um, I just think all these things are going to be stressful for the wrestlers and we just have to do our best to make them comfortable and get the best out of the season that we can. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? So obviously we can't wash the mat between every match and wrestle on the same mat. Or, I mean, what are some of your suggestions? I'm thinking like, Wet mat, excuse me, wet mop on the mat one way and then a dry mop right behind it would really be the only way to, to do well, I that. Think what the, uh, I think what their recommend, recommendation is is that we have two mats right. during the try so they can wash one, wrestle on the other, and then swap. And then there's that also that uh, that light. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but they the use ster- it. The sterilizer. Yeah, and that light, it, it's like it's about $2,000. But, um, you know, if we were to have a state tournament at the end, that light would be extremely beneficial rather than waiting for the mats to dry between matches in a tournament setting. Um, We'll see. For sure. It's very effective. Um, In fact, uh, they did use that system to clean the mats between matches at the college NCAA division one national championship. And uh, do you have the, the numbers on that, Kevin, on how that went? And, I'm and- not sure. I don't know the exact number, so I don't want to, you know, misspeak, but I know that there were thousands of tests for the wrestlers, well, 300 and something three days in a row. Of course that number reduced, but they didn't have any positive tests, any positives. And I think that laser that they were using was the Steri laser. Yeah. Um, which is a sport mat sterilizer. Um, and, you know, hopefully either the Interscholastic League or our association can maybe get them just to help help us get through this season. Right. And um, I believe they partnered with a big company today. I don't know if it was Cliff Keen, or, uh, but one of the big wrestling companies just did a partnership with that sterilizer so very effective tested multiple times a proven system and something that i know i'm implementing at cranston west that's already going to happen there's without a doubt um you know if the ad gets it you know that's great and uh if not i mean it's something that i'm going to have to get anyway because i you know like you think that that's going to be an issue with waiting between uh matches to uh have that mat dry because let's face it, not every match goes six minutes. Some matches go 15, 20 seconds. Then what do you do? Then you you just sit around and wait. But with the, the light system, it's going to speed things up um, uh, immensely. Uh, So would you look like uh, today, Kevin, you know, over at Hendrickin Uh, today, we didn't practice today because we got the okay on Thursday. Yeah. Um, We didn't quite have enough time to put our plans in place. Uh, we had a, a meeting. Uh, we're going to start practicing tomorrow. And uh, but it, you know it looks like numbers are down, but we're going to do the best we can to get as many guys in the room and and go from there. I mean, we, we can only do what we can do this year. So yeah, basically we uh, we moved mats today yep. <laughs> <laughs> to try you know from up in storage where they were at to the room and uh we did some running to get things going but uh it's going to be a tough start and this was what i was afraid of with that late you know no answer yet no answer yet no answer yet and then in the 10th hour of spring break 
saying, hey, okay, you have a season. Um, I just wish we had a little more time like you, but um, it is what it is. Everybody's in the same boat. And, right. uh, you know, I mean, our schedules aren't even finalized. Right. You know, we have, we know we're wrestling people, but we don't know if we're home. We don't know if we're away. We don't know what the certification date is. We don't know when the two pound allowance is going to kick in. There's a lot of things missing that the interscholastic league has to, you know, get to us. Um, and hopefully they do that. Yeah. Well, they would have to do that. And, uh, you know, somebody has to let them know. And we have, you know, I think Tom's on that. I think yeah, Galgan's on that. So Tom and and Bobby, uh, yeah, Demetri, for sure. yeah, for sure, are, are on that um, as well. Um, so uh, you know, thanks for your input on that. Right now, I want to bring up um, Serge, who is the owner of Mayo Kwanji and the head coach for Situate High School Wrestling, and most recently, um, the Reno World Championship team Mayo Kwanji, I should say you guys did you did you win the world championship over there oh yeah we won it as a team in the yeah. U15 congratulations probably the That's toughest huge. division there so we were real excited about that yeah you know, it's, uh, there was a time on the national level where uh people on the other side of the bracket would if they drew a Rhode Island kid they were pretty happy about it and that's I can tell you that's not the case right now. Everybody's looking at Rhode Island saying, like, what's happening? We can't sleep on these guys anymore. Right. I've had a lot of people on the national level now coming up to me, coaches from around the country, from really tough teams, you know, coming up and saying, hey, what are you guys doing? <laughs> something something special is clearly happening. And it's not just out of Mayo Quanchi. There's, there's, there's some other kids doing really well besides the kids from – from Mayo Quanchi too. Uh, right. Obviously there's uh, Blackstone had, I think two all Americans at NHSCA Brown bears, I believe had two. Um, uh, Iron faith had their first one. Um, they had a young kid, Michael Diorio. He'll be heavyweight next year in high school. He's in eighth grade. So they had an eighth grade all American. And we had uh, at, NHSCA, we had seven All Americans: three in the high school, four in the middle school. So, that's that's a really good showing. I mean, traditionally, we didn't. If we got one every few years, that would place in the top eight. It was it was something. And now, last few years, we've had we've had consistent results, and it's growing. It's not just it's not just Josiah Fry winning it now. We got Josiah. We have Nick Fine. There was a whole bunch of kids that did really well. Uh, Jacob Joyce was in the finals. Yeah, that was a tough, a tough match, tough loss. I yeah, won. yeah. I'm, I, you know, Gabriel lost in the semis, which I think Gabe was the better wrestler. But you know, at that level, you make a mistake and you get put on your back, and it's it's, it's all done. It's good learning experience for these kids. But we're definitely in the mix. We're definitely Rhode Island's on the rise and. People are people are starting to take notice, saying like, "What's going on in this little tiny state?" Right. Yeah. Certainly are uh, for sure, and it's uh, good for the sports, promoting the sport. Uh, you took a bunch of guys up. I saw uh, how many guys went up from Aquanji to Virginia Beach. Yeah, there was probably twenty something. I don't know the exact number, but there was over twenty. That's a lot. Yeah, well, that's what I'm doing. I'm just getting these kids, and I'm I'm using the same model that I used for judo. I'm just getting these kids, and we're getting in on, on the road and doing whatever we need to do to get the experience we need. If we can't get it in our backyard, then we got to go to somebody else's backyard. Right. So that's what I've I've been doing, providing the opportunities for them here to the best of our ability. Yeah. We don't have the depth of competition like if you go to if you're in Pennsylvania, obviously you have a tournament every single weekend. That's tough as nails we don't have that same opportunity so although we have great wrestling in rhode island we have a lot of great coaches in rhode island believe it or not we, we really do problem is is our kids aren't getting exposed the way they need to expose so we're traveling and doing the things that we need to do and we're bringing people in and like we got steve Macau is doing a clinic at mayo Quanchi this weekend i'm bringing him out every couple of months and uh 
you know, we're just going to make it happen for these kids. Whatever they need is what we're going to provide for them. Right. Right. And across the board. So for someone to travel to, let's say, you know, Reno world or, um, the Tulsa nationals, what does it cost per kid, um, for the parents out there that, that hadn't gone because they, they didn't have the means or the, the knowledge or the wherewithal, um, just to even know what it costs, what would it cost per kid generally? Well, we have a, we have a pretty tight knit group. So in, in some cases there'll be one, one parent that goes with three kids. Yeah. So they're splitting a hotel, which is what, 50 bucks a night each. And that's more than covers the hotel. You have the entry fee of up to a hundred dollars. And then you have the airfare, which can be anywhere from three to five, six hundred dollars, depending on when you organize it and when you go. The biggest problem that we've had lately is that you don't know if the events are actually going to happen. So you're kind of holding off. Uh, right now, I have more banked flyer miles than I know what to do with because all the events got shut down and then then you're sitting there with uh, mileage points that you're probably never going to use. So we've been holding off a little bit to buy the tickets because we don't want to be in that situation, but it's, it's getting a lot better now. So we know that we're going to certain tournaments and throughout the year and we can, uh, we can plan ahead. Like we know we're going to Fargo right now. We're going to, we're going to start building our team toward Fargo, but then you have to go to the qualifiers. We don't really have a qualifier for our state, but states like Pennsylvania have qualifiers in uh, Fargo. But I do recommend that people go to the qualifier so that you get um, seating. You don't want to walk into Fargo with uh, no seed whatsoever if you can avoid it. Right. Well, at least we're getting more into the planning stage rather than not knowing if it's going to be canceled, waiting till last minute. And then, of course, when you're waiting till last minute, the flights are, are going up and up depending right. on, on where you're going. So, um, so yeah. You, you can get to a lot of these events for, uh, like, Virginia Beach. Most people drove. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't that much money. Uh, the hotels are not cheap. They, they kind of get you on the hotels. I think we paid $154 a night, and then they tack on – whatever the taxes and fees. So you're at fees. Yeah. Yeah. And in some places they'll, they'll charge you 30 bucks a night for the, for the, uh, to park your car there too. So they kind of get you there. Yeah. But when you're splitting it up and you're, you're, you're traveling in groups, like we have a really tight knit group at Mayo Quanchi. So, yeah. uh, and I have a lot of really nice kids, you know, Luke Montefusco, you, you know, a lot of the kids on the Mayo Quanchi team, they're just, there's just a lot of great kids on the team and uh, it's, it's easy to travel together that way. And, and sometimes the parents are making it into a vacation. So like what I do with uh, Gabriel and my kids, because it's such a grind for our kids two years ago, no, in his eighth grade year, we started wrestling year round. It was his first year of year round wrestling. He had a decision to make. Do you want to, do the judo run or do you want to do the wrestling run? So he chose wrestling and I, I'm 100% behind him on that, but it's a grind and you got to get to tournament after tournament after tournament. So what we try to do is add a lot of fun into it. We try to have, um, do some extra things with the kids. Like we'll stay an extra day or two. If, if we're in Florida, we'll go to Disney. If we're in Virginia beach, we'll go and visit, uh, whatever is near there for attractions. Our kids had a real fun time on the trip, uh, being on the beach and everything. So I think that's really important to keep in mind too, that you don't want to just get out there and run amok. And you also want to choose which tournaments make sense for you. If your kid is going to go to and barbecue at Virginia beach, it might not be the tournament that you, that you go to. You definitely won't, don't want to, do that either. There's there's an over the top choice in tournaments that you can make too. There's a lot of top 100 tournaments that are great for kids. There's a lot of tournaments that you can get a lot of uh, dual meet matches, uh, and you can develop them that way. What's the next tournament that you're looking at right now? 
Is I myself, well, I, I got a lot of the younger kids and some of the older kids. I'll probably be doing the Southeast regionals. I was thinking of doing the Northeast regionals in Pennsylvania, but I'll probably do the Southeast regionals. That'll be in oh, Jacksonville, Florida. What, 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 I, I said, yeah, it's warmer there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah, percent. We can add some fishing or whatever into it too. Right. Yeah, so so built-in vacations, making it really fun. Um, turning out champions, having a good time, staying with it, sticking they've, with they've it. Missed so much. They've think about these kids that are seniors right now that have poured so much into their wrestling. A lot of them have been wrestling since they're just out of diapers, five, six, seven years old. And they, they've lost everything with this. You got they gotta make up for some lost time too. Yeah. So provide them as many opportunities as possible. Right. And traveling at that level certainly does that for them. And it also gives them that, that competition that they need to go out there and face that competition. And, you know, a year, two, three years later, uh, pull in a, a national championship or win a Reno world championship. And it makes the difference. It really, really does. So oh, yeah. congratulations on that. You, you, a lot of the kids don't do Everybody talks about what do I have to do to get it, get it, get in this college, get it, go win. I promise if you win, eyes will be on you. Right. People are already calling about Gabriel. They, they can't talk to him, but they've called me saying like, what's your plans? Uh, if you win, you get on their radar. Every college coach in the country is watching those tournaments. And, uh, I think even more so now because they can't go to the tournaments either. They got to do everything online, which is, which is a shame, but it is what it is. Right. But it's also easier to have more eyes on you too, as well with, yeah. you know, these live stream matches. Uh, the, the coaches don't necessarily have to be right there, but they can be there with their list, with their roster of who they're looking at and, and check them out. And then, you know, all of a sudden you get a call from uh, some of these coaches and say, Hey, what's, what's going on? And, what are you putting in the water in Rhode Island? <laughs> right. Yeah, so, uh, so that's, that's good stuff. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thanks for being on the show. We're going to take a short commercial break. We're going to come back with uh, the kids. Uh, I should call them men. We come back with the warriors um, from the past two weekends and see what they have to say and how they got prepared for it and how to be a champion uh, both on and off the mat. So hang in there, guys. This is Tommy Lynch with Snap Down Wrestling, and we will be right back. Hang in there. Okay, are we back? Nick, are we back? All right, good. We're back. Is this thing on? Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is Tommy Lynch with Snapdown Wrestling, powered by Fans Only Sports Network. And we're here with Coach Kevin Hennessy and Coach Serge Boisdu. Uh, and we're going to be bringing up um, Serge's son, actually, who uh, we saw him on here not too long ago. Uh, he was a, a Tulsa national uh finalists uh, we, we watched that match it was a very close match uh against the um two-time world team all-star member and uh could have went either way so this kid is a, a freshman and is wrestling on a, an, an amazing level for his age um he was uh in 2020 he was second place in reno worlds um but uh in 2021, Reno World Champion, uh, bring in freshman Institute High School, Gabriel Boisu. Gabriel, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Fabulous. Thank you. Love the gamers chair. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, congratulations uh, on winning the Reno Worlds. Uh, amazing uh, performance, amazing road to the finals, and even a more amazing uh, finals match. Um, the focus, the balance, uh, the confidence, the toughness, uh, you got it all. The, the strength, the speed, the technique. Um, you're a freshman. You have big things ahead of you, and all we can say is just you know keep that going. Keep that drive going, um, and and you're just uh, an all-around class act. Talking to you last time, um, just the way you carry yourself is just absolutely amazing. So, leading up to uh, the worlds, what uh, what was it looking like for you, uh, training-wise, and eating, mental focus, balancing school? Were you distance learning? Were you going in person? Were you hybrid? I just want to. You know, see what exactly we are doing uh, prior to that, and what uh, led up to it. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's been like a very strict schedule. We've been doing tournaments every weekend, uh, so it's kind of it kind of keeps you in the focus of things, eating healthy and all that stuff, making weight. Uh, but so yeah, eating healthy, and you kind of have to keep going with that, no matter what. It's important even if you're not wrestling, but. Um, since we've been doing this for a while, week after week, it's uh, starting to get used to it, and it, it really helps all around. Um, I've been doing like only distance learning school. Um, it's actually I feel like it's easier for me as an athlete because um, it's less time. Uh, I get more sleep, obviously. There's uh, like less time that I have like on the school bus. So I get more time to train. I can leave my house earlier, uh, get home later, work out more, and there's a lot less stuff to worry about. Get yeah, like uh, all around. Right. So right now, is it just the wrestling? Uh, are you doing any lifting along with that, or is it uh, just wrestling? Um, training? We are starting. We have been starting straight training. Um, not like, not close to the tournaments. Right, like right before them. But when we have time in between, we have been doing a lot of strength training every day for about we cyclically do strength train cyclically. So he won't he won't do heavy lifting and before a tournament four days out he's not right. he's not lifting at least four days out from a tournament. But okay. so is, it, more, is it heavy lifting or is it more reps focusing on that the fast twitch fibers and the endurance uh, end of it? He's doing more explosivity training than he is heavy lifting at this time. Now, uh, he was talking about going up in weight. He's thinking about he might go up to 132 because 26 is getting a little bit hard for him to hold. Uh, but he understands that he needs to incorporate a little bit of heavy lifting into that to pack some meat on if he's going to do that. Right. He's just got some decisions to make and. I think right now he's sticking at 26, but he's going to go out to Fargo and do 32. He hasn't. He hasn't really. De you haven't decided, have you, Gabe? What you're doing? Not yet. But he's. I don't have to tell him like go lift or anything like that. He'll do that. He does that stuff on his own. Okay. Yeah, that's the drive that I was talking about. That uh, you have to have to be a champion, and you know you have that, guys out there. You know you got you got to push yourselves. You got to push yourself. So you can't always rely on your coaches. The coaches are there to do it, but you got to take it upon yourself to take the initiative to go out there and push yourself to go above and beyond. Um, if you want to have that edge that we talk about so often. All right. Um, so Reno world championship, you rode up there, um, you know, getting to the, getting to the finals. What's your, what's your thought process? You're in the semifinals. Take us through that right up to the finals. Um, the way I see it, I like to take it uh, one match at a time. Uh, the mindset I have is, which my dad teaches um, a lot of the wrestlers, like I just said, one match at a time, and don't worry about the guy that you're wrestling uh, and, or whatever they won yesterday because they have to wrestle you today. So that stuff doesn't really have to affect you, and you just got to go out there and wrestle your match because so you don't really need to worry about what this person's accomplished. Right. Well, we, we have that finals match. Um, I like to run that now 
for those of you that haven't seen it, um, some of you have, but but a lot have not seen it. Uh, let's see if we can't pull up that uh, Gabriel Finals mat. At the uh, championship. Nice. Nice. Did that run smoothly for everybody else? Yeah. Did you see that? Yes. It was right. good. I like yeah. It. yeah, that was um, just amazing. You, you had that so tight that it was pressed off that off that tilt. The ref was in great position. And, I mean, he was stuck, man. He was stuck to the mat. He couldn't even move. Absolutely yeah. amazing. What a match. You, you were – you're so pumped. I mean, you, you jumped up. You gave us the you gave us the double biceps, and uh, it was just awesome, just <laughs> awesome. Dad, I mean, I mean, what were you thinking in that moment? How were you feeling, like right there? I me, I felt like my kid got a monkey off his back because he fell short at the New England Finals High School. Yeah. Then he fell short at well, he fell short at Tulsa in the finals. He yeah. fell short at the New England Finals. We went out to Reno Worlds, and last year he had uh, he had lost to uh, he actually got beat up pretty good by the kid that took fifth or sixth. So it showed, showed his improvement. Um, but I, I just I was so relieved for him, just because he's been working so hard. You know, this year he he had broke his leg in a freak thing wrestling, and then. Just a few weeks back, he broke his nose and had to have surgery on his nose to have his nose fixed. So he couldn't um, he couldn't train for two weeks leading up to the New England. So that kind of hurt him a little bit. Yeah. And uh, the kid's just been through some adversity, and you like to see that when you see a kid come through adversity and then just accomplish what they're setting out to accomplish. Right, and I, it's been a long road for him this these last couple of months um with a few silly injuries and right you know making weight and stepping up to these tournaments and falling a little bit short but i mean it's it's fantastic like, take like nick fine too like i was saying to him earlier in the show how i've watched that kid uh fall short in some events like last year's new england's and a few other things and you know the kid's got greatness in him uh him and his family have been plugging away at this for years and years, putting him where he needs to be. And to see a kid like Nick also come up and do what he did is just, it's so relieving when you, when you accomplish the goals that you're setting out for. Right. It's, it's what it's all about. Back. It's a hundred percent what it's all about. Oh yeah. Um, so to fall short, um, 
so many times in, in such big moments, not due to, you know, anything other than, you know, it just can go either way at that level, at a world-class level. And to be able to go in there and actually keep plugging away, keep pushing, keep pushing, keeping your head up and staying positive and knowing that you're going to, you're going to do that just shows that greatness and just shows that tough skin and, and shows that Iron Man mentality where you're just going to just keep going and going and going. It's just absolutely amazing. Now, the one thing that the season being pushed up, you mentioned before, Gabe, is that holding that weight is very hard. Um, had the season went off when it was supposed to on December 2nd, um, you probably would have been at the 126 because you're there, but keeping and being able to hold it is not only going to be tough for you, but I noticed that that's kind of the consensus throughout the league with all these other teams. So um, you're talking about going up to 132. Right. Yeah. I was, uh, I was thinking about that cause it's, um, cause I've been uh, going down to that weight class just for a little while. And um, so I was thinking about if I should start uh, putting on a little more muscle mass just to be able to, just so I can move up a weight class, like allow myself to uh, eat a little more, all that stuff. And yeah. Be, be a little bit stronger because everybody knows uh, weight cutting can definitely affect your wrestling no matter, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just a couple pounds. Um, yeah, absolutely. And you know, Gabe, I've I never been too you're going to be it. all right. I think you're going to be all right at 132. Um, at 126. And in fact, pretty much whatever weight you're wrestling at, I think you're going to be all right. I, th I think you're going to be able to push through it. And, uh, you know, my philosophy has always been build and just be stronger. So, uh, you know, cutting the weight, you've held it. It's getting hard for you. we got nine weeks left. We don't know when that uh, allowance is going to come into play, but it's how you feel. You know, if you're feeling weaker and you're having trouble holding the weight, then by all means, uh, go up. This, this was Gabriel's first year cutting any weight at all. He's never – he's always just going in, going in flat weight. Wherever, whatever he weighed, that's where he'd wrestle. I encourage people to do that too. Yeah. Up until you're in high school, don't cut weight. You don't right. need – you can compete on the – yeah, it might cost you on the, on the highest stage when you're young, but you can't put – like I was a Reno world champion in, in seventh grade – on a college application, you, people are going to look like uh, you like you have three heads. <laughs> Nobody right. gives a shit. Even right. in middle school and NHSCA or any of these events, the middle school level, nobody's looking at you. They, they right. couldn't care less. It doesn't it, go on a college resume. It's all practice to, to, to get you into that level of competition and to get he, you used to that level. Even as a freshman, I, it's wonderful what he's doing with NHSCA, Reno Worlds, all that. And it is getting him on the radar, but – it's not Super 32. It's not Fargo. Those are, are real events. If you're looking at a lot of coaches taking a look at you, you, you need to be on those radars. Right. And But these are the events that get you uh, ready for, the, for those levels and get you able to compete and get you, you know, good seating and, and ranked and, and everything that you need. So just keep doing what you're doing. Thanks for sharing. Uh, your thought process through the whole thing. Um, it's inspiring on, on many levels. Um, now, um, again, thank you uh, for, for doing that and sharing that with us. Uh, is Tom with us? Is our, our coach, uh, just president still with us, Tom Galligan? Hey, Tom, how you doing? You, you're muted. Unmute your microphone. He's on his flip phone. Hey, I got a, hey, hey, I got a new flip phone. Look at that. Whoa. Holy, holy team mobile. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, Gabe. Awesome. Good job. Thank you. That's outstanding. Now, um, Tom, today was the, the first day of practice. We're all very excited about it. Um, basically, it was just moving mats around and some running and just trying to get things organized and together and see what we got uh, left um, after, you know, everything that has happened and, and who quit and who's doing this sport and who's doing that sport and um, just uh, shaking it up and see where we're at. We had a great day today. Numbers are obviously down. We're going to wait till the end of the week to see what we got, so we can't really do a count yet. But you know what? I don't mind the smaller numbers, especially under these circumstances, because le the less people in the room, 
um, kind of the better um, at this point, you know, um, wrestling with masks are happening. Um, the social distancing is happening. Um, what else is, is going on um, that people would need to know about? Well, I think Kevin covered quite a bit of it with the washing the mats and the masks and all that stuff. And I know we're all pretty frustrated over it. I, I think the tough part is people are making decisions who aren't in, like really involved with the wrestling component of it. And they're yeah. just looking at the overall, um, I don't know, I, I guess, attitude of people towards wrestling rather than understanding the sport itself. But I give the in a ton of credit because I think if it happened over the winter, it wouldn't have. And they've been pushing, pushing, pushing for us to be able to have a season for these kids. Right. And like Kev like Kevin said earlier, if you see some of these kids, it's just good to get them out of the house, get them going, get them moving and, and stuff like that. But it's basically what we said. Hopefully we're working on the weight stuff. We can get this weight certification straightened out as far as, you know, the two pound allowance and when we're going to cut all that off and everything else. So that's what that's the next thing we're, we're trying to really get a hold of. So hopefully we'll have that answer real soon. When you say real soon, what do, do you have a guesstimate of when we'll know that info? Well, they told me every Friday for two months that they were going to make the decision on the wrestling season. So right. my guesstimate is when they change, when they decide to. I think this will be easier, uh, but it's still they got the health they got that health um, um, component to it. The um, you know the doctors involved with it and stuff like that. But we've got had a recommendation from the 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 track wrestling guys on what to do and I brought it to them and hopefully we'll get an answer on that soon and we'll know what that what that is. What we're hoping is to just start with a two pound allowance and 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 go deep into the season until the cutoff date. Because it's it's a nine week season and usually we have eleven weeks before that cutoff date comes in. So we, we got a few things in the fire and hopefully they'll go with it what we what we recommend. Well Usually we get the weight allowance in January, which is like a third into the tournament. I right. mean, third into the season. So, I mean, if we're going nine weeks, let's go three weeks and give the kids an allowance. Well, what I what I recommended was, and Pat had recommended this, the allowance right off the bat. Yep. Like and, then, and then about two weeks before the state tournament, to the cutoff date. Because Gabe likes nice that. Season. What? <laughs> I said Gabe likes that and allowance yeah. right away. Oh yeah, it, it allows the kids to lose some weight, get in shape, and not try to hurt themselves losing too much weight at once and stuff like that before before everything gets started. Like so it. hopefully that's what the recommendation was last time, and I'm hoping I got some calls and I'm hoping to hear soon on that. Well, some of the kids because of the fat test, right? Because of the timing with only a nine week season, won't be able to make weight because of their pinch test anyway. Right. Right. Basically, going to wrestle what you weigh. Did, did you see the size of the kid that Gabriel wrestled in the New England finals? Kyle yeah. Dell this year. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy, holy smoke. I was like, I, that's not even, that is not to take anything away from the kid. I mean, God bless him. He, he was able to do it, but oh, man. Yeah. He looked like he was Nick Fine's size. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Um, for sure. And, uh, Definitely, uh, wow, hollow bones. You know, some kids just, <laughs> just have that. He said, it. he said he came down from 160 to go to 126. Wow. 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 That's okay. crazy. And, uh, you know, Nick definitely came into his own, too, with putting on um, some size and just the transformation from one year to the next. Um, and Nick was is uh, amazing, you know, and still you holding see. it. Yeah. Look at the yeah. size. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yep. I, I saw that match. Yeah. Can't even tell where that thing is. That's just, yeah. That is like huge. Does not look like I'm 26. I was laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come out. I was like, wow. Yeah. Big. And it's only a one day weigh in. So, so no. yeah. When he, then he gets oh, yeah. the next day, he's. Hey, you know, Tony, right he's Something back in the building at 132. <laughs> right, right. We all used to do that too when we were cutting weight big time back in the day too. And uh, we would eat and drink after the scale. So the next day we're like 10 pounds, 12 pounds heavier. Not sure that happens anymore because they're doing a little more safely and more effectively. Um, so, all right, Tom, I, I appreciate uh, appreciate that. And uh, have any other information that you can 
let us know about? Or Kevin, do you have any other um, questions that you're no. unsure about? No. Okay. Very good. Um, right now, though, I'd like to take the, the time uh, just to uh, mention and uh, take just a moment of silence um, for um, Rob Smith, who is a dear friend of ours and a wonderful coach, an amazing wrestler, um, you know, a, a three-time state champion, two-time New England champion, amazing person, family man, friend, father. Um, a moment of silence for our, our friend, Rob Smith. Thank you. Um, he will surely be missed. Um, Tom, thank you for coming on and uh, giving us that information. Um, we'll bring it to you, uh, everybody, as, as we get it. We will we'll put it out and, and post it, and uh, everybody will know soon uh, what's going on with the schedules and whose home matches and whether we're using mops or sterile lasers or you know, everything's going to come together over the next 10 days because basically by May 13th, we're going to be wrestling uh, try meets. So we're all looking forward to that. Again, Tom, thanks for taking the time to. Thank uh, you. Yes, you got it. Okay. Um, let's, uh, Kevin, uh, if we may uh, go to um, your senior wrestler who, um, as I just mentioned, has just like just he went from, it's almost like he went from a, a kid to a man like in in one season um the size that he put on and his, his space and his attitude and just his body structure looking good feeling good um he's a four-time nhsca all-american three-time all new england two-time finalist he's uh the 2021 Spartan New England champion and outstanding wrestler award recipient, a three-time state finalist, two-time Rhode Island state champ, and now your 170-pound 2021 NHSCA national champion, Nick Fine. Good afternoon. Nick, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> Good <pretty> afternoon. Great. <laughs> great. Congratulations um, on that. Um, Absolutely awesome. Uh, senior year, season not happening yet. You're going after it, and you accomplish what only one other wrestler uh, was able to accomplish in Rhode Island among all of the great wrestlers that have come through. So just outstanding, man. Outstanding. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. You got it. What uh, what did you do to prepare for that and, and stay focused, stay motivated? Um, honestly, it it was kind of for me just not trying to change anything too drastically with my training. Um, aside from getting in a couple extra workouts to get some weight off that I didn't have to shed for the last couple of tournaments, um, I really didn't prepare much differently. Rather in the uh, quantity of my workouts, but I, I definitely did up the intensity in a lot of my practices, but it wasn't even by choice. It was just uh, my coaches and training partners just pushing me harder because I think they they knew the potential I had in the, in the upcoming tournament. So I thank them for that because that definitely got me in the right mindset as far as the confidence and intensity I would need. <laughs> for sure. Um, Going in to your your finals match, um, what what was your mindset there? Were, were you nervous at all? Were you just like, I got this. There's nothing stopping me. What What do you feel? Were you tired uh, through the match? Um, like the night before my finals match, um, it it was. I'm gonna kind of approach it pretty laid back. Okay, I got out of my semifinals probably like eight o'clock at night. And my, uh, my only focus was getting a nice dinner before I went to bed. And I, I knew that anything that really happened at that point was out of my hands. So 
I I didn't really care one way or another because I knew whatever was going to happen was going to happen. I was pretty confident that I was I was a better wrestler, so I wasn't stressing about it at all. Definitely not nervous, but it's also because I've been in like these positions so many times, and it sounds cliche, but you definitely get used to it after a while, and it definitely helps at least me deal with it better. For sure, yeah, yeah. Well said. The the more you're in that situation, the easier it becomes, the less the nerves get, the better of you. And the more you're able to kind of take control of the situation because you become a bit of a seasoned veteran at that point. Like, yeah, I guess I just, you come to realize that you don't have to, uh, you don't have to get the same warm up in. There's no, there's no like routine that's going to make sure you win. If you, if you, uh, don't run for five laps around the tournament. It's not going to make you lose. You've had years of, I mean, years of practice that have made you to the wrestler you are. The little things that happen, if you eat a French fry the night before, it's not going to determine whether you win or lose a match. It's years of things that have made you who you are. So I don't really uh, stress over like little things like that kind of. All right. Speaking of which, you said you were looking forward to a dinner after your uh, semifinals match. What did you eat? Um, I went to this Italian place. I got some sort of Alfredo shrimp in it. It was great. I was full, though. I was a little worried, actually, because sometimes I do get a little too full. And I didn't realize. I thought it was the same time. I thought I was waiting until 530. I thought I was going to hit the beach, maybe relax. Then my dad told me it all rolls out at 7. So then I was like, uh oh, so... Had oh. to get to bed early, but yeah, like I said, no sweat. Just definitely focused, but not not uh, putting my mind to too much trouble. Right, right. Well, you said, you said it doesn't really matter what you eat. You know, if you eat a French fry or well, you know, obviously you it matters genuine generally that you have to eat healthy. But generally. it's just like the the little things shouldn't uh, psych you out too much, kind of. Right. And determine, you know, what you what you've done. Oh, I lost yeah, because I ate a French fry yeah, last time. Yeah. Or I won like because I, I ate uh, because I ate Italian. Hey, forget about it. Hey, what are you yeah. talking about? You know what I mean? So <laughs> that doesn't determine it. What determines it is your training, how you yeah. eat not consistently on your diet. You know, yeah, exactly. Staying hydrated and uh, just doing things the right way. So um, that's that's really good. Speaking of which, we do have your finals match, so I do want to run that um, and uh, take a look at that for those that haven't seen this match. I apologize in advance that I didn't make it as quick as good. All right. Nick, I didn't even ask you, but we do have your permission to run this, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Great. Nick, have you wrestled this um, Florida wrestler before? 
No, no, I haven't even heard of him. I watched a couple of his matches the night before, though, so I kind of generally knew what I, what I was uh, getting into. Let's walk us through um, a little bit of uh, thought process as you're as you're going through and and where you were at. Um. Well, he actually, I think, pinned everyone in the first period up until the finals. Yeah. And, um, so I didn't have much to go off as far as uh, scouting, but he pinned everyone in the cradle, and a lot of it was from uh, was from the opponent shooting in on a shot. So, and that was kind of like straight leg Ben Askren stuff. So I knew that I wasn't going to stop shooting because shooting is what I do. But I knew as soon as I get in, I had to get his leg off the mat. Yeah. Or at least turn my hips the other way so that he couldn't cradle me. But the biggest thing was getting his hips up and away. Yeah. Whichever way. At that time, I had to sit. But he caught my arm pretty good here, and I didn't want to get caught in like a Win Dixie type thing. So I kind of waited for a stalemate here. Um, right. The only the only other thing I think I noticed was a cross face cradle on top. Other than that, I just wrestled it normal. You had some really good patience uh, here throughout this match, really just setting up and choosing your shots. Yeah, honestly, you probably wouldn't have seen it seen that patience out of me in many other situations. It was it was pretty hard, but I knew that it was the finals. And normally, like patience is great, but I hate I hate a full period of neutral with no points. It's just boring for me. But right, I knew it was. I didn't want to force anything, especially with a bad shot was going to put me right into a cradle. So, right. Okay, so it's your choice here. Yeah, my coaches wanted me to go neutral because I think they saw that he was pretty good on top, but I I, I knew I wanted to be up three, so I chose yeah. bottom. I thought I could be pretty smart about it. And then I ended up getting pretty lucky here with the lock hand. He's, he had that arm trapped up pretty good. Um, yeah, but honestly – that point didn't really change anything because it was three nothing, but I was still on bottom. Yeah. So the only way he was going to beat me is if he turned me, and that would still put him to overtime. So it it was great on the scoreboard, but I don't think it really meant much. I still needed to get out. Right. Now I see you got that that leg um, brace on. Do you have an injury to your knee? at this point or after the first day of wrestling i felt great i wrestled great nothing but for some reason i took off my shoes and as i was walking to my car i just had an excruciating pain at my kneecap and i just i couldn't bend my leg and before the second day before my Canadian semis i was like up all night i couldn't sleep i couldn't bend my leg wow but i I don't know. I, I took some Advil and I got it taped up well, and it killed me now. But the adrenaline, I just couldn't feel it at all. So right. Yeah, it especially it's cranking fully, on it here. Yeah, it was fully functional, and it even got put in some weird positions, but it was fine. Right. I'm sure in the next couple of days, I'll start to feel the effects of it. But it really was hurting me earlier. But then after that. It was as soon as like I would start warming up, the pain would go away. So. 
Yeah. I just wanted to keep a pad on it just in case in the middle of the match something, and I had to like power through it, but I didn't end up having to. I, I would have been fine without it. Yeah. I don't know, Kevin. I, I, I think uh, he deserves a little time off practice to, to make sure that uh, leg is okay. Um, what do you think? I don't know about time off. Maybe go easier to practice. <laughs> Nobody gets time off. Right. So the intel from uh, a buddy of ours is that that kid was a two-time Florida State champ. Yeah, he was he was ranked sixth at 182 going into the season. I know, but he dropped to 70, and I don't think he was ranked at 70. Tough match. I mean, on this level, and I, I've seen you wrestle and been watching you wrestle for a few years now. And uh, this is you, you know, breeze through kids. So for you to have this level of patience, your balance is phenomenal here. Someone's yelling all day long, meaning, yeah, you know, you just stand up there all day long. The balance is incredible. Um, your patience is, is phenomenal. And Man, hats off to you, because like I said, I mean, I've seen you wrestle. I think, uh, I think Nick's reaction right here tells it all. Like in his mind, he might not say it, but he he knew he was gonna win. Yeah, I mean, he handled that, you know, so well at the end. Like, just okay, I'm a national champ. Yeah, what's next? <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Well, uh, what's next is is the season, and uh, what's next after that is uh, Columbia. Uh, congratulations on Thank that you. as well, Nick. Uh, Columbia commit. Um, uh, amazing school. You, you must be looking forward to that. It's kind of weird, though, Kev. You know, with uh, you know these guys already being committed, and you know we haven't even had a season yet. Uh, Nick committed last season. Oh, you committed last committed season. Early, early commit, yeah. Wow. Wow. Wow, great choice, Columbia. Great school. Um, I'm lucky to have him. Oh, definitely, definitely. Outstanding wrestler, outstanding uh, person, um, sportsmanship. I mean, everything across the board. And I remember watching your father wrestle um, at Cranston East. Um <laughs> They wrestled on dirt then, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, Sorry, in Trebelli's backyard. Right. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I used to go to the match. There may be more truth to that than what people realize. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Um, and uh, I went to, to Cranston East. So I would, of course, go to all the East matches. And uh, Greg was just always – uh, top competitor and, and tough wrestler. And uh, obviously that's been passed down. And uh, your dad is, is super, super proud, obviously. And uh, congratulations again on uh, being a national champion. I look forward to seeing you wrestle this season. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks again for joining us. And uh, Kev, uh, thank you for staying up late. I know it's past your bedtime. Yeah, definitely past my bedtime, but thanks for having me. <laughs> No, it's been fun, and Serge, uh, always a pleasure. Thank you yeah, for thanks. for sharing and uh, for your insight. And uh, Gabriel, uh, thank you again for sharing your story and your training uh, habits and, and what you do. And you guys are, are both champions and an inspiration to all of us, to the viewers, to the kids, to the guys coming up. Um, as I looked up to a Greg Fine when I was – you know, in sixth grade, watching him wrestle, the same thing's happening uh, for you guys. So, again, congratulations on, on being champions. Keep up the good work. And uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in uh, to Snapdown Wrestling. We are here each and every Monday night at 9.10, and we are uh, produced by Fans Only Sports Network. And we will be on 9 o'clock or 9.10 next Monday night. So, Please tune in. Thank you for your viewership and for all of your support. And we are all excited about the upcoming season. We are going to be uh, 
showing some matches, going to be some, some live streams uh, and coaches out there that are watching. I'm going to hit you up for some of uh, your varsity uh, accomplishments and their records and some of the information on them. So we can uh, have fully commentated matches uh, to where we're giving both wrestlers their just due. So, um, when I ask for that, please send it along and, uh, we're looking forward to a great season and live streaming, uh, all of the, at least West matches, but it's also going to be open to other schools. You know, obviously there's going to be tri meets. So, um, there are going to be some, some great matches and some great live streams. So, uh, thank you again, everybody for watching and, and tuning in to snap down wrestling with Tommy Lynch produced by, uh, Fans Only Sports Network and our showrunner, Nick LeBlanc. Thank you, guys. Be safe uh, and have a great night. We'll see you soon. Good night.